G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, what a turn of events and what a 24 hours. I mean, we were on a little bit of a dip yesterday and today the market has just dumped and we're going to have a look at the reasons why. But again, this was at $2.5 trillion and we're heading, you know, towards that kind of $3 trillion mark. And now all of a sudden we're down 9.8% and this was higher before. So this was 10 plus percent and we're now down at $2.3 trillion. Now we're going to have a look at what has happened, but you know, are things as bad as what kind of people are making out at the moment? Well, number one, we'll come back to this shortly. Fear and greed index. I mean, we we're way up in the 60s and 70s. 68 yesterday, 65 last week, and 74 last month. So people were just too super greedy at the moment, and when it gets that high, you just know a dump is coming at some stage. How big it's going to be and how long it's going to last, that is the million dollar question. But now we're down at 31 and everyone's fearful. I never offer financial advice, but I know what I do on days like this. I'm buying the dip. Now, unfortunately, you know, I could have timed it better. I was buying yesterday. But it is what it is. I could have bought today and possibly got cheaper. But again, I'll, buy, I'll be buying tomorrow and I'll be buying that dip if it stays down here. Now, what has caused all this turmoil? All right, so the turmoil was caused by Elon. He's put out a tweet and he said Tesla is no longer, or at least suspended for the moment, uh, its support for Bitcoin payments. So you can't go and buy a Tesla using Bitcoin anymore. They didn't sell any Bitcoin or anything. They're still holding. They're just not accepting Bitcoin. And his reasoning was that it was due to the amount of fossil fuels uh, that are used to mine Bitcoin. The problem is Bitcoin is actually leading the way in going green. It's cheapest to mine Bitcoin. Now it uses a lot of energy. No one's saying it doesn't, but it's cheapest to use, uh, sorry, to mine Bitcoin using green energy. And that's what a lot of the big miners do. They use hydro, they use solar and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, the market's gotten a tizzy about it at the moment and gone, oh, you know, does that mean that, you know, Bitcoin's kind of done and everyone's gonna move away from Bitcoin? No, look, I just think it is part of Bitcoin making sure that it really does, considering how much energy it uses, it really adopts that green energy and pushes that kind of space. But yeah, for the amount of turmoil that that kind of created, you know, again, it wasn't that bad, a 10% dump, but oh, people have gone crazy. I mean, let's have a look at the charts over here. We've dipped down to prices not seen since a couple of weeks ago. So it wasn't that bad. We kind of came up and then we came back down. We're still in this ranging pattern that we have been in, you know, since back in February. So it's just chopping sideways. Uh, and, you know, again, it's not breaking way down into here. Hasn't done that. Could it? Sure. And the 50-day moving average really is just, you know, it's both support at times and more resistance at the moment. But I think we're going to quickly recover and get back up here. But now that I've said that, all of a sudden tomorrow we'll dump even harder. We'll just have to wait and see. But for me, I'm buying the dip. I'm not panicking. All right, let's go back here and have a look. So BTC dominance down to 40%. ETH dominance nearly at 20%. And gas prices have about halved, which is good. But they're still super high. And I'd say a lot of that has to do with the dump at the moment. All right, what has really pumped though? Because we know there's been a lot of dumping at the moment, but has anything done really well in the last 24 hours? All right, yeah, we've got a couple. Feg token, don't know anything about it. Uh, and, oh, good Lord, seven days, up 1,500%. Uh, if you got on any of that, whew, well done, congratulations to you, and I'd be taking some serious profits. But that's just me. Nano, I mean, boom, look at that. I don't know what's happened there, but... Uh, that is quite a good rise there. Kasama, uh, Aave and Synthetics. Uh, I knew Synthetics was going to come back, but look, can it sustain this? Not really sure. Matic continuing to go up, and we got some more Matic news. Polkadot making a bit of move, but look, there's only a couple of really good ones, and then we're into the kind of minor gains. But look, it gains again. Now we've got to go to the other side of the scale, though. What has really got knocked about in the last 24 hours? Because there was definitely some pain there particularly today. All right, EOS, uh, you know, made some good gains and also uh, had some pretty big retracements. Yearn Finance, likewise, uh, got knocked around a little bit. Uh, the Bitcoin uh, knockoffs uh, have been knocked around a bit. 
Uh, Ethereum Classic, again, that was always going to happen. Litecoin, again, a bit of a retracement. It hit those kind of all-time highs, uh, has pulled back. Filecoin, I'm looking, I might buy some Filecoin tomorrow, I think. And Safe Moon. I mean, this has been spoken about being a scam, and yet people still jumped on board. Uh, again, I haven't looked into it myself. I only know what I've heard, but from all aspects, it sounds like it's a Ponzi uh, and people still want to jump on Ponzi's. But there's a lot of losses here. I mean, look, they're all sort of double digits at the moment. You know, stacks. Did you buy V Chain? I bought some V Chain and it's dumped even lower. But look, them's is the breaks. I still like V Chain. I think it has massive upside, long term potential. So I'm not too worried. Engine, I think engine start to look pretty good at the moment. It's had a good retracement. Might have to look at buying into some more engine. But again, there's Bitcoin, you know, down 11%. So big retracement at the moment. All right, we've had a look at the markets. What are the news stories going on at the moment other than Elon, you know, and his tweet really uh, hammering the market? I mean, the other thing is they did say they're going to look into, you know, more greener kind of payment methods. So is there some other kind of cryptocurrency, particularly maybe Doge, that uh, may all of a sudden be accepted by Tesla? I guess we'll find out in the not too distant future. All right, Gemini's crypto uh, custody tops 30 billion as analysts predicts Coinbase shares will fall to 100. Look, that's what I was always somewhat suspicious of, that the Coinbase shares would do really well at first and then have a big retracement. I'm not sure where they're exactly at at the moment, but you know, $100, I'd probably be pretty happy to get on them considering they came out, I think at about 300 and made up to $400. Uh, does it say what it's trading at at the moment? Uh, it's fallen from 328 in its first day, currently trading at 288. So, I mean, if it could go down to 100, that's still about a third of where it is. So that's something I'll have to keep a look at. I haven't bought any yet. But again, I said I'll, you know, I was likely going to wait and I would just accept if I was wrong. But, you know, maybe I might be right. We'll see. Because these are stocks I'd definitely, I'd still, sorry, I would still like to buy in. Uh, I just didn't know if they were at the right price when they came out. All right, seems the long arm of the law is catching up with the BitMEX, guys. And yeah, seems like March 28th next year is when they will go to trial. So it's still a long way away, you know, nearly a year, not quite, a couple of months less. But yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to know what the charges are, like the specifics of it, because I don't know exactly yet, you know, what it is they're being uh, charged with. I think it was something like market manipulation and something like that from some things that I've sort of heard along the way. But Anyway, March 28th for those guys. We'll wait and see what happens. All right. Stan Druckenmiller seems like he's one of our biggest proponents now. He says crypto is the solution to the problem created by the Federal Reserve. The USD could lose its status as the global reserve currency due to the Fed's controversial policy and a ledger-based system could replace it. Uh, i.e., you know, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't think it's uh, going to possibly happen. I think it is going to happen. So not could replace it, will replace it, uh, plain and simple. Again, US uh, dollar could still remain there, but it'll be like the USD system. So you'll be able to see exactly how much is being printed and what's happening with it and all the rest of it. But a public ledger system uh, is how uh, we're going to operate in the future it's just exactly when that's going to be rolled out you know sort of worldwide because people are clawing on you can't trust these systems where uh, they're not transparent and that we don't know what's going on we don't know what they're doing uh, with the system you know we're being told it's eight trillion that's being printed but you know is there somewhere we can actually go and look uh, and see what's happening with the money where it's going who's using it how they're using it we don't currently have that a lot of it's a walled garden system and a public ledger system, I think, is the way of the future. It's just exactly when we get to there uh, is, you know, is what we're going to all speculate on. All right, U.S. inflation is up 4.2%, but Bitcoin is still down. Now, why is that? So the consumer price index just registered its biggest increase in over 12 years. So why isn't the price of Bitcoin going up too? Look, I think Bitcoin's price is going to go up and that's a positive for it that uh, inflation is up. But the reason for it is really down here. Bitcoin may be an inflation hedge, but to many it is also seen as a speculative asset. And that's the part that uh, has you know the, the hyper volatility involved in cryptocurrencies is it is really speculative at the moment. It's still so early on that there's not enough history to show 
you know, that it's legit and it's here to stay and all the rest of it. Although, you know, you could say Bitcoin's been around for 12 years, so it's probably got some history, but nowhere near the, you know, decades, if not maybe even sort of 100 plus years um, of history that, you know, our regular, you know, unfortunately, fiat systems are currently have. So for me, I think Bitcoin uh, is still very speculative in uh, that regards, but it's, you know, it's coming out of that speculative phase into just mainstream and legit. But we've probably still got a few more years, maybe even a decade before that really solidifies itself. And, you know, the most skeptical of people will be able to say, all right, this is legit and I'm in. So that is the reason uh, that it... Uh, you know, it still fluctuates so highly. But look, excuse me, at the moment, even the regular markets are fluctuating all over the place at the moment. So it's just the times that we're living in. But I think Bitcoin will be the winner. Uh, you know, this 4.2% uh, Bitcoin is the answer, in my personal opinion. But anyway, I'll let you make your own mind up. All right, more NFT stuff. This just continues to get bigger and bigger. So the Ethereum-based PC role-playing adventure will let players amass uh, NFT loot that can be traded, but the studio will keep custody of it. So uh, the game is called Big Time. So startup game developer Big Time Studios has announced an Ethereum-based PC role-playing game called Big Time. The studio features former developers from Fortnite, Call of Duty and other hit games and has just reached, uh, sorry, raised over 21 million so far. So again, th this is where I see the NFT space kind of being really big. Not so much, you know, these random, you know, sort of card, you know, like Jake Paul and, you know, Floyd Mayweather uh, NFTs and all of that. I'm not saying none of them will ever be worth anything in the future, but most of that is just sort of, yeah, other than that, you know, a sentimental thing, they don't have a lot of sort of value outside of that. NFTs with inside the gaming space, I think these are going to be huge. They really are going to be massive. Someday I see some of these being worth ridiculous amounts of money because, you know, it was, and it's something that can be carried into other games. And again, there was such a limited supply of them, some special gun or sword or, you know, wand or whatever it is. Those I can see being worth big money uh, in the future. But again, it's still the same as those other NFTs. Select ones will do really well and others just won't. But this is where I see, you know, the biggest sort of gains for NFTs in the current environment, in the future, like we were talking about yesterday, I think toys are all going to come out with their own sort of NFT thing in the future, and I see that being a big space. And again, there's, you know, engines teamed up with that company to make NFTs something 3D and tangible as well. So you'll have the digital element and you'll have the physical element. I think that's going to be a really, really big space as well. All right, Facebook and their DM, they're not done. So the DM token. The DM Association, the Facebook link group building a stablecoin, is partnering with Silvergate Bank to launch a US dollar peg stablecoin. And they're going to do stablecoins all over the world. So there'll be an Australian one and a European one, an English one, you name it. DM Network US, a subsidiary of the association, will run the DM Payments Network and register as a money service business with the Financial Crimes Enforcement enforcement network so fincen while silvergate will be the formal issuer of the dm us stablecoin silvergate will also manage the reserve backing uh the token so facebook continues to move forward in the digital currency space uh, and again there's been tweets about you know mark zuckerberg and he's named one of his goats bitcoin and everyone's you know kind of going mental at the moment saying are we waiting for a formal uh confirmation that facebook has actually invested in uh bitcoin uh it, it wouldn't surprise me and you know it's just when that news will finally finally leak out that will be very very interesting and what it does to the market does you know because it'll probably be so late because you know there's rumors that it kind of happened last year uh will it have you know that kind of effect where it really pushes the market up or does it not really do too much? I think it'll probably push the market up a fair bit, particularly if we find out that it was you know, a lot more money than what uh, has been invested into Bitcoin previously because Facebook has a lot of cash on the side. All right, Binance users. Seems they've been uh, locked out of their accounts for a while. 
And th this is interesting. I mean, this kind of explains it really well right here. Binance Global Exchange halted withdrawals on Monday in a temporary suspension that affects all of its users, as did other exchanges, sorry, like Coinbase. And they do this regularly when there's a big fluctuation, you know, of either, you know, Bitcoin going to the upside or to the downside. They halt everything and it's, uh, you, you know, stops things from getting too crazy and, you know, we kind of don't want that in a free market, but I guess in some regards we kind of do. You know, not so much to the upside. If it's going to go, you know, super parabolic, people really want that. But the problem is, at some point that parabolic move ends, and then you just have a massive dump after it. So, yeah, I'm in two minds about how I feel about that. You know, that they, you know, have those kind of circuit breakers. It is good for the general person to not see too much upside followed by a whole lot of downside but again a free market i guess should kind of be a free market so i'm not sure how i feel about it uh again i'm sort of 50 percent one side and 50 percent the other of i like it and then i don't like it now it's not uncommon for exchanges to have downtime or freeze withdrawals at times of hot market activity but since at least late 2020 binance users from the us and around the globe and the globe have had their accounts frozen for unconventional reasons so it'll be interesting to see what happens with this and you know what binance's uh reasons are uh, for you know this happening most of the time they come out and say it was just a technical glitch and due to a lot of people uh joining you know the platform that's uh what the issue is and look that happened back in 2017 as well all right moneygram so moneygram international said wednesday it will allow customers to buy and sell bitcoin for cash uh at 12,000 US retail locations through a partnership with CoinMe. So even MoneyGram's getting on board. I mean, there was talk about MoneyGram using XRP and all the rest of it. Uh, then that kind of fell through. So now uh, it's come to Bitcoin. The cash, transfer, the, cash, the cash transfer company plans to introduce Bitcoin trades in 20,000 stores across 32 states by quarter three of this year. So we're already in quarter two. His crypto firm already ha, uh, uh, already facilitates. Oh God, I'm struggling. His crypto firm already facilitates cash for Bitcoin swaps at around six thousand supermarkets and kiosks. But here's the kicker: MoneyGram and CoinMe will make four percent of customers' transactions plus two dollars seventy five in fees. Now Walmart based MoneyGram locations will charge two dollars more, so you're gonna pay a premium for it. So for me, that's why I wouldn't do it. But look, some people will be happy with it and just won't care or be unaware of it. For me, Bitcoin is a store of value. I don't use it uh, to transact daily. All right, here's the big news about Polygon. So decentralized exchange aggregator Slingshot has chosen to launch to the public on Polygon, a, a blockchain that runs, uh, what is that, T uh, Tange Tile. I don't even know how to say that word to the main net, uh, to the Ethereum network, and one that's a lot faster and cheaper to use. So, you know, Polygon they just so many people are going in there at the moment, and I really think the upside for Polygon uh, is massive, uh, and that is shown in the price. You know, when we're going over, you know, to the big movers, Polygon still going up a dollar sixteen. Like, you know, it was worth two cents. I mean, it was worth less than two cents. I was lucky enough to get it around sort of two and three cents. Uh, I haven't bought any since. I, I probably should, uh, but it's just done so well. And again, I wish I hadn't put so much more into Polygon. You know, I've basically 50x my money uh, on Polygon, and that is nothing to kind of, yeah, throw shade at. I, I really, I, again, it changes because the market's constantly changing but I think Polygon is now my best performer uh, by a, a near country mile. I don't think anything comes close to it, but I've got some synthetics network quite cheap as well. So I know that's up there. And likewise, I got Aave quite cheap as well. But again, these were, I didn't, you know, hindsight. I wish I could have had of, I, I wish I could have had of, I wish I had have put more into them, but it is the way it is. All right. That's it for me at the moment. So the market is, you know, freaked out by this, you know, tweet from Elon and, you know, people have panicked and all the rest of it. And there's been panic selling. That's what that is. That's panic selling. For me, I haven't sold anything. I've bought and I am going to continue to buy. This is just a great dip. 
again, Bitcoin, it's just ranging sideways until we really see it break right down into this green and God forbid break below. There's nothing bearish about this. It's just sideways movement. Uh, and I think that's likely to continue before eventually we're just going to break to the upside. It's just when that's going to happen. But Bitcoin, you know, traditionally in bull markets, you know, when it travels sideways, again, we had some sideways, you know, there's a bit of a fake out, still kind of traveling sideways before we got to about sort of here. And then that's what we did. We made this big, massive move from here all the way. And again, look, this move was done back at $10,000. It was ranging around 8,000 to sort of 10,000, broke up above to 12,000 before it came back down and then just went on this rocket. I think that's exactly what's gonna happen now. All right, this has been a long video, so I won't take up any more of your time. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but for me, I haven't panicked. Love to know your thoughts down below. Did you panic sell or did you buy? All right, I'll see you next time.